Hello my crafty friends, it's Sharon Luska here from My Crafty Greetings and we're gonna be doing a collab video with my friend Sierra Taylor. We're gonna be showing you some scrappy tales and some craziness when it comes to ink blending. I'm gonna load Reinker directly into my giant blending brush here and uh, I do not have a lot of supplies here in Myrtle Beach with me so I am just gonna be winging it and doing some different things that you may like to try. I'm not a pro at ink blending like Sierra is. She is a fellow Canadian and boy oh boy is she skilled at ink blending. Sierra has a real eye for this stuff and her projects just shine when she does ink blending. I love watching how she's able to pull this all together and I wanted to give it a try myself and see if I could even manage to hit the mark when it comes to ink blending and meet Sierra's approval. So I have gone and used my brushes to ink blend this sheet and I'm going to use my little cube here to ink blend the edges, but I'm gonna tell you the light blue and dark blue brushes are both loaded directly with re-inker. I love to do this. It's a fast tracking way of ink blending and if I mess it up, this is one of the ways that I make sure that I can cover up my mistakes is I like to add some little bits and spots of ink over top of my background with a stamp and that helps fool the eye when it comes to exactly how bad a job I did. Now I also love watching Sierra splatter and I thought that I could splatter too and I'm going to tell you I have a ruined dress now. <laughs> I was splattering this way, which is the way I normally splatter, not even realizing that the whole time that I was doing this, that I was coating my brand new black dress with sparkly white dots. Ugh, so upsetting. So I had that second sheet here and I ink blended uh, some more ink from my brush after spritzing it with water and I decided to take a gelato and finish the bottom part that I wanted a little bit of shimmery sheen on. So I just spritzed my little sponge there and rubbed the gelato into the end and gave it a bunch of swishy swirls and thought maybe that looks like ink blending. I don't know, did I hit the mark? <laughs> then I decided, you know what, maybe I would do some more backgrounds. Isn't gelato just like ink? It kind of looks like ink blending when I do it like this. And if I have a bunch of colors, is it gonna work the same? I don't know. I started getting some bubbles while I was doing it and a few little pills came off the paper, but I did think that maybe in the end, it did have a fairly convincing look for ink blending. You tell me. So let's go back to where I was reloading those brushes with the re-inker directly instead of using the cube. I didn't want to put that ink to waste, so I decided I better do some ink smooshing. And did you know I'm ink smooshing challenged as well? It's not just ink blending that's an issue for me. That's what I got when I was done. Is it right? I don't know. So here's my jam. This is where things come into play for me. I've got my Cut Perfect sheets and my Wall Safe Scotch tape, and I have these gorgeous seven pointed stars that they no longer stock at Hero Arts. I'm gonna try and find something similar, but I've cut them with my uh, cutting machine and they cut right through and this is why I like the cut perfect sheets is you can easily see that everything's cut as well as my wall safe tape which comes off without damaging your project as long as it's dry though let me remind you of that so here's the spin on ink blending we're gonna add my jam to it, which is die cutting. And there's so many things you can do with your ink blended panels once you die cut them. But this star is just a tease. I wanna show you one more trick. If you have patterned paper that has a gradient page in it that you can cut up like this one, you can easily take a little ink spot or a mini inker and put some ink blending on it to make it your very own without having to go through all the extra work of ink blending like a maniac to make it happen. And this is what I found worked for me. It did give it a bit of a different texture because of the type of paper, but I think in the end it worked out just perfectly. I added on my little signature, stamped some ink on it with uh, some stamp Stamps to add a little bit of pattern and cover up the stuff that maybe doesn't look the best and I used all three of my colors to do it and then I did go back to the whole idea of splattering. I have a little bit of golden iridescent gold acrylic paint here. I'm going to give it a little bit of water and then I am going to correct my splattering technique so that I'm not wearing it and it's not covering all of my furniture. If you notice I'm flicking the paint 
off of the little palette there. That keeps it under better control and means that you're gonna have a better job done. And then you, there's not gonna be paint everywhere where you're working. That's the way Sierra does it, and I think it's brilliant. Okay, here's the die cutting spin, and I'm using these Sizzix square framelits, or square frames, I guess. And I'm picking every other frame, starting with the largest one. I'm just taking a piece of my scratch paper and drawing myself a line so I can line these squares up and this actually works with rectangles too. If you know where to line the corners of your dies up too, you'll have a much easier time lining them up properly. Make sure you have some wall safe tape handy because those little suckers are mobile. They'll go wherever they want to. I like to get them adhered down to the scratch sheet of paper and then I add in each one bit by bit and then stick the tape onto them to keep them held in place. Once I've got that done, then I'll easily be able to tape down the other corners to keep them lined up and then I can pick it up and transfer it to my project. I wanna put it on the front like that, but I'm gonna be turning some of the squares uh, on an angle, so I wanna make sure I leave enough space at the top. I've got that zipped down there, and we can go ahead and run this through the die cutting machine. Now you can see where we can rotate this so that we get different colors showing up in different places. And with these die cuts, you can very easily play around and make your very own designs. You do whatever you want with them and cut them in any way you like. The whole point being though, is that we can take some of the light colored pink at the bottom and some of the intense colored pink at the top and mix them all together so that it gives a greater display and contrast of your hard done ink blending. I'm taking these two little frames and I'm putting the little skinny one on an opposite gradient to the fat one and I'm putting a little bit of uh, tape on them to make sure that they're gonna stay in place so that when I glue, glue them down, nobody's got anything shifting around. Now I did wanna make sure that I took my uh, background sheet here and stick it down to a five by seven piece of uh, Nina Solar White, and as I was sticking it down, the worst happened. It started to go crooked and then it started buckling up and I started to panic. I panicked and I started ripping. I think we've all done this at one point or time in our careers of crafting. And if I had heated this up, I probably would have gotten it off better. All I did was reversed back to where my sheet was stuck down properly and then just followed it through even though it was wrong. You don't have to worry about it being wrong everywhere. Sometimes you can fix it. And once I got it set down, properly and flat, I could take the wrong part and just trim it off. So here I have my squares and you can see I'm giving them all a little bit of a spin so that I'm mixing up all of that color. I love how the slim cut is over top of the dark pink with the light pink and we're seeing the white triangles peeking through. I really love this pattern and how it looks. Now I'm watching to make sure that I do get them on different angles and so that there's different colors lined up with each of the places that they're going to connect. Now they're not always gonna work out perfect and don't worry, this is not Van Gogh, this is card making. I added a little bit of ATG to the bottom one because I knew that I wanted it to be stuck down firmly and it's gonna be hanging off the edge, but I'm taking a look at it here and giving it a few turns to get that light pink back up into the dark pink. And I'm watching the little triangles that are revealed on the inside there so that it's nice and even. Now I have these all lined up the way that I want and I'm holding them together so that I can just add glue to the corners because they're only gonna be connecting the other frames by the corners and that will hold them in place nice and sturdy, but still gives me a little bit of slip room so that I can move them around if they're not perfectly lined up. I really like this design. I think it's a little more subtle than the first design that I showed you, and I think it's gonna be great for what we're adding here. Now this is the perfume bottle die set, the A7 perfume bottle die set by Scrappy Tails, and I am in love with these flowers. I have to tell you that perfume bottle I've used in many, many projects, and I have a very hard time keeping it in stock when I'm selling my cards. Everybody seems to grab those perfume bottles like crazy, and they don't even have these gorgeous flowers on them. I'm adding a little bit of detail with a light gray Spectrum Noir marker, and that's going to help add dimension to these flowers. The other thing I like is even though there's 
the four dies cut four different flower shapes, you can combine any two of those flower shapes together to make completely different looking flowers. And on top of it, Sabrina thought to make sure that there was two totally different centers. And I love these centers, they're adorable. They kind of look like amoebas. If you did a science project, they'd be fabulous. But you can stick them in anywhere too to change the flowers as well. Now, from the assorted leaves die set, I've pulled myself out a, a couple of the uh, trailing vine leaves, and then I'm gonna put my flowers right in the center in a nice little little trio. Doesn't that look adorable? I'm pulling a couple of leaf sets off of the long leaf stem up at the top of the screen there and just tucking them in directly around the flowers and once I have the composition the way I like it I'm going to take a little bit of glue and I'll just tip the flowers forward so I can get some glue in behind them. This means that I can hold my composition and put everything together easily without a lot of work. I'm also going to do this with the leaves here as well. Stick a little glue in there, stick the leaves back in place, and we're away to the races. I'm going to continue on flipping things forward and adding little dots of glue to secure all of my little pieces in place. And I'm going to ask you if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would love it if you would subscribe. If you want to see how that blue card turned out, you're going to have to subscribe so you can find me again and check it out later on this week. If you could give me a thumbs up, that would be fabulous. And do leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. It makes me so happy. And don't forget to hop along and check out Sierra's channel as well. If you've come from her channel, it sure would be nice to know that you came from there. And just give me a high high from Sierra's channel. That would be fantastic. Now I showed you that both of the gold and the black thank you. And you can see how the black thank you really sets off the centers of the flowers. So I'm gonna pull the gold splatter from the background back into this card composition by adding on some gold gems. I love these gems, they're from Scrappy Tails and I'm altering a pen here so that I have a sticky, um, a sticky applicator <laughs> to be able to pick my gems up and stick them on my card. Anyways, the gems are from Scrappy Tails. They're $3.95 for that entire bag. They're fabulous. I do hope that you'll use my affiliate links to go check out the products that I've used today. I absolutely love using Scrappy Tails and I hope you enjoyed seeing me use these products too. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a fabulous day. Hope you get a bit chance to craft. Thanks so much. Bye!